Hey everyone! We are at the top of the OBA Public Library, one of my favorite places in Amsterdam that I've talked about in multiple videos. And here is a beautiful panoramic view. Over there, are some offices. Over here is a cafe. And over here is me. Hello. Hello, Tech Lords. Hello, Amandeep. How are you? Tech Lords, my favorite mod. How are you doing? Happy Sunday, guys. I'm Kristen, if you're new here. And welcome to my daily live stream on Traveling with Kristen, where we just go behind the scenes in the digital nomad lifestyle. And you never know where, where I'm going to be or what time I will be here. Um, yesterday, we were on a boat. Uh, checking out the coolest spot to be on Saturdays, uh, which is the Waterkant Bar. It's like the coolest place. If you're a local in Amsterdam, you definitely know it. And now you guys know it too, because I just told you about it. <laughs> but I don't know if some, some of you might have heard of it if you've been to Amsterdam, but that's a super cool spot. We did a live stream there yesterday, interviewed my friend Michael, who is from Florida, who's a digital nomad living here and he's been living out of the country for 18 years. So that's a really long time. And hello to everyone who's in the chat today. Um, Tech Lords is here, Amandeep is here. I am well, thank you very much. Where are you right now? Tech Lords says, is it Sunday already? Hi, Pi, Moderate Pi is here. Good morning, afternoon, evening, no matter where you are in the world. Uh, which city are you guys in? Whoops. Show chat, please. Okay. <laughs> Amandeep is in a very nice city. Watching the restaurant? Something? <laughs> I don't know. Um, so if you guys saw the live stream from a few days ago, I was talking about um, how I find places to work remotely while traveling. And one of the places that I put was the library and so actually today I moved around a little bit and I worked this morning I, I took off yesterday so I worked a lot today so this morning I worked over here in the at the rooftop of the science museum okay getting really creative and there you can see it it looks like a ship that green building so this way we're looking, we're on the north side of Amsterdam, or almost on the north side, looking south. Um, and this is, I think this is the Amstel River. And this is all of central Amsterdam. And in the back you can see the business district. And you used to be able to walk over that way, but apparently not anymore. But on that side, um, there's Central Station. And you can also see um, there's a, a hotel, I think it's a Hilton or something, with a sky bar over there. So you can, if you want to see the other side, there's other buildings down there with rooftop bars. And actually the Sky Lounge is one of the best rooftop bars in the city. So this is the library, believe it or not. So in the morning I worked at the Science Museum, it has a free rooftop cafe, bar, coffee bar, terrace, where you can go and it's open from 10 a.m. until 5.30 p.m. So you don't have to pay for the uh, museum to go in there. You can just go. And yeah, they have Wi-Fi, they have coffee, they have beer, they have food, and they have amazing views. So it's a really good spot. You can, it's like full sun and it's a great spot to work. It's a great spot to hang out read, write, hang out with friends, and spend a weekend for sure. So those are some of my Amsterdam tips, and I posted some other ones in uh, my Amsterdam for Digital Nomads video that went live on Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. <laughs> so I realized that in the craziness surrounding getting that video ready, which actually, if you, if you watch it, in the part where it starts on the boat, you'll hear like a really high pitched whistling noise. And that is the noise that was present throughout that whole section of the video that my friend 
removed. So thank you, shout out to Park Studio Sound in Amsterdam because they fixed it <laughs> for me. But there is still like a one second part that you can hear it. So you can tell now why I wanted to remove that from the video because it would be really annoying to have this like high pitched whistling going throughout like five minutes of the video. So anyway, in the midst of that, I did not do the Q&A Friday. So I was thinking we'll just do it now if anyone has any questions about traveling or remote work or what have you. And tomorrow is a very important milestone because it marks 90 days of daily live streams about remote work and travel and the location independent lifestyle and life in general on this channel. So that is pretty cool milestone. We're hitting a lot of milestones this week. This week was 2,000 subscribers. Um, I got my first time 1,000 likes on a single video. Ah, that was the Lisbon video. It, pro it probably has a lot of dislikes as well. They didn't tell me how many. I can look it up. But um, yeah, so 2,000 subscribers, 1,000 likes on that video. We're going to hit 90 days of daily live streams and what else? I also crossed 325 days of consecutive meditation this week. So I've been meditating every day for almost a year and I'm at over like I think two weeks ago I crossed over 500 days of meditation tracked in my app. So anyone interested in meditation we can do a live stream on that uh, let's see if we can see another corner of the view I just have a lot of stuff here so yeah I like to um, change up my workspace so I worked over there in the morning and then this library is open until 10 p.m. so I just had dinner downstairs but you can also have dinner here and then start working and you get free Wi-Fi at all of these places God bless Amsterdam with their free Wi-Fi everywhere. If you're just walking around, you can get pretty much free Wi-Fi anywhere. Do you guys want to see more of the view? Or do you want to ask some questions? What do you want to do? Pi said, oh, well done on all the subs. Yay, thanks, Pi. It's pretty cool. It's weird because, you know, you put in a lot of effort on YouTube and it's like, you just never know what's going to happen. Like, it's weird because you put the equivalent amount of effort into everything, whether it gets a hundred views or 10 views or like a million views. It's such a like crazy thing because in work, let's check out the other. Side. You never want to leave your stuff unattended, especially in a city, especially, well, I won't say especially in Amsterdam, but you just never want to leave your stuff out unless you're in a place like Sweden. So let's move over. This is where we're going. Hi, Ahmed. I'm going to go over on this side. So yeah, you know, like we have, we're taught from being little kids that if you you have to work harder and harder to get things but it's not necessarily true and then when you work remotely and you're living like location independently it's all about working smarter it really that's in any job i think well not any job but in a lot of jobs and so youtube is like an example of one of those things that like you can put in the equivalent amount of work and like one video will get a million views and one video will get 10 views. And it's just like a really weird feeling. <laughs> so it just goes to show, like, especially these days, it's all about just how, you know, how you focus and how you organize your energy and focusing on output and not necessarily hours worked. So the traditional industrial model of work is all about clocking in, doing your eight to five or nine to five or whatever it is. And the new model of work is gig economy, freelance, and 
um, working a different schedule that can seem a little bit ad hoc sometimes, but there's always a method to the madness. Uh, let's see. So here's more of the view. Angel is here. Hola. So here we can see a little bit more. Hi, K Bar. Got some boats going through. It's a beautiful day. It's a bit cold though. I think the high was 50 degrees Fahrenheit today, but it's really windy. If you're just tuning in now and you see this big green ship looking building over there, that is the Nemo Science Museum. And that is where I was working during the day. You can't really see like, there's, oh, I can zoom in. I forgot because it's YouTube. So if you see like right in the middle, there's kind of like a glass, can my finger go there? Right there. <laughs> that is the cafe. And then on the other side of that, there's uh, like a giant kind of just like open space out in the sun. And you can just walk, look at the view and hang out out there and it's really cool. So I was working over there and then I came over this bridge over where those people are biking across and I came over to the library. So it's a little bit dark over here actually, but I have the whole entire patio. There's no one out here. And that is my other tip, which is going to places during off peak times and hours. And I always do that. Let's check out the chat. I have to always reopen it on the app. I don't know why. Uh, do, do, do. Ahmed's in Cairo. I have never been there, but if I go, then Ahmed gets to be the tour guide. <laughs> Tech Lords was in Cairo in 1971. What a cool time to be there. Ahmed says change algorithm. Which algorithm? Oh, like a life algorithm or the YouTube algorithm? <laughs> Angel says Viva Costa Rica y Nicaragua. K Bar says hello. Oh yeah, 1971. I think everything's changed since then. Wow, Egypt, I heard Egypt is like one of the most populated countries. Is that correct? I believe that I read that recently. Tech Lords lived in Senegal from 66 to 71. Can you tell us what you were doing there? <laughs> what were you doing in Senegal back then? Was it a secret? So what do you think? Oh, your dad was working there. Oh yeah, you were probably a kid. Was it for military or engineering or something like that? Oh, a teacher, cool. YouTube algorithm for marketing videos. Do you think it's changed recently? I think it's changing all the time, yeah? I've been researching a lot about this um, having two channels thing and I'm still reading up on it a little bit more and I'll have an announcement for you guys tomorrow. So Ahmed, I don't know if you heard, but yeah, tomorrow's 90 days of daily live stream. So it's a pretty big milestone. And shout out to Ahmed and Tech Lords, by the way, for being my first two Patreon patrons. Thank you guys so much in the, um, in the Jet Setters and the VIP club. So if you want more about that, head over to my Patreon page since this is an ad free channel and I want to keep it that way like forever. I think that's the best. So I, today I did the live stream in my Facebook group too. So if you're more interested in remote work, since this channel is a mixture of travel, remote work, entrepreneurship, um, those types of things, this is the dilemma because traveling with Kristen, this is it. This is two different topics, but some people are way more interested in the travel part. Some people are only interested in how to make money online, working remotely, things like that. And then some people like both. So if you like more of the remote work stuff, then you can join um, my Facebook group called Digital Nomad Success, long-term digital nomad success. And that's like more focused on that and less on travel, but also travel, obviously. But that's why the videos are a mix of both. <laughs> it's like, um, what's that guy who does the travel guides? That like old man who's Rick Steves. 
<laughs> it'll be like the Rick Steves of digital nomad travel. Um, what else is going on? Thank you for posting that, Tech Lords. So yeah, I was also saying I, I usually do like a weekly Q&A in addition to the live streams, but because of the, the video this week, um, I forgot. <laughs> so if anyone has any questions. Oh, Ahmed says we should all arrange to meet in one place someday, seriously. Yes, for sure. And um, I really, really want to do the retreat this year. So I've been looking a lot in my calendar and trying to figure out how to make that work. I'm thinking September to do like uh, the first Traveling with Kristen retreat. That will be obviously really cool. It will be in a cool place. It will involve wine <laughs> and other really cool digital nomad contributors and teachers and to kind of do like a hands-on um, series of workshops on how to work remotely or how to optimize your life, that sort of thing. Um, Pi said, how many times have you done a walk away for your videos and it ends in a fail with you being out of shot? Uh, you mean when I'm filming myself? <gasps> I have a third patron, who is it? <laughs> I don't get notifications from Patreon. I need to figure out what's going on. Like, I, and I've been, Tech Lords, I know Ahmed saw this, but did you see I was posting in the Patreon um, Lens app for the first time this week? I've been trying to figure that out. It's, it's like an Instagram story, but for Patreon, it's pretty cool. We'll be doing a lot more of that now that it's set up. Um, yeah, wait, Pi, can you elaborate? Do you guys like the outtakes of my videos? <laughs> I get a kick out of them. Like I totally forget what happens. And then I go to edit the video or I'm like reviewing the clips and I find all of these fuck ups and it's really funny. I think that's the best part sometimes. Uh, Alberto's here. Hey, what's up Alberto? He's leaving some, dropping some cool comments in the videos this week. He said, blessings from Spain. These videos keep me motivated. It's great to see people that are already having the lifestyle that one desires. Thank you. That's what I'm here for. But you know, it's not all perfect, but it's pretty good. <laughs> K-Bar said, wine, LOL. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking when I was uh, streaming on Twitch before. Hey, Darren, is that Darren? Yeah. When I was streaming on Twitch before, um, if, you've, if you're familiar with Twitch, people put like these wish lists up um, for Amazon with like stuff that they want or tech stuff, things they need, whatever. And I was thinking, I never did it because I discontinued Twitch, but I was thinking I should put like all these like funny, like rose related um, products as my wish list and just nothing else like only wine related or rosé related like very very extra <laughs> very what is the what is the millennial word for it yeah extra i think is the word um just like as a joke but also seriously so i might actually do that <laughs> They have like rosé, I don't know, like rosé everything, like bath salts and like random stuff. You know that uh, Matt Bowles likes to talk about wine with me too. I actually don't even know that much about wine. I just like to drink it, which is fine. Nepal app market is here, hello. Actually, that was like one of the things on my list to do is to learn more about wine, but guys like gotta just do one thing at a time oh P pi says when you're when you're walking away from the camera on a hike for example and the shot doesn't work out right yeah uh, basically that happens to me all the time um because i'm filming myself a lot and i'm not the best with camera settings so yeah, I'm just not that good at using my camera. And so I'll set up the shot and then I'll get in it and it will go out of focus or something. And then you have to review it 
but sometimes I'm doing a lot of shots really fast and I don't have time to review it or I'm with other people or an interview or something. And then I look at it later and it didn't work out right. <laughs> like in the Estonia vlog, there's a shot where I'm like walking like I set up the camera on the ground actually. And then I run over to the lady cause she was explaining to me about the haunted house. And then it's like out of focus, but you know, something's better than nothing. Uh, doo -doo -doo. And also, <laughs> hi, have you seen my Camino de Santiago video? Is that what you're referring to? where I was on a hike and it was getting dark and I almost got stranded on the Camino de Santiago with like no cell phone battery, no food, no water. It was bad, but I made it. Ahmed says, why do you think about the best country for medical tourism? And Alberto says, have you ever tried meditation, visualization and affirmations? Oh yes, actually, did you hear? I don't know if you were on the stream yet, but at the beginning of the stream, I was talking about some, um, some accomplishments for this week or this month because we hit some milestones in the past couple days, which were 2,000 subscribers on YouTube for the first time, 1,000 likes on a single video for the first time, that was the Lisbon video, and also I crossed, I get like milestones in my meditation app, which is Insight Timer, shout out to Insight Timer. I've tried Calm, I've tried Headspace, not feeling it, Insight Timer so good. On Insight Timer, I crossed 500 days of meditation um, like a week ago. And then this week, I like a few days ago, I got to like my 325 consecutive days of meditation. So that was another milestone. So that is a really big part. My stuff is still here. Yeah, <laughs> that's a really big part of my life. And I, I can't really remember how I used to deal without meditating actually, now that I do it every day. Um, and sometimes it's not always silent. Sometimes I'm doing um, guided meditations, but I think that counts too. As long as you're setting aside time to do the meditation, then that's, that's good. Alessandro is here. Hello, Alessandro. Oh, Pai has to go. Okay, see you soon. Um, Oh no, wait there. And then Ahmed asked, what do you think is the best country for medical tourism? Um, I, while well, being from the US and living in Central America for eight years or more than that, I think, I'm um, really familiar with the North and Central American countries for medical tourism. So Costa Rica is a really big one. Um, Mexico is a big one. But what I've learned is that almost any country is a good country for medical tourism outside if you're from the US. So almost any country you can get just as good or better and cheaper health care compared to the US. Like no offense America, but our medical care is not that good. It really is very allopathic with no room for holistic treatments unless you're going like completely outside of the system. Insurance doesn't cover anything holistic and you don't really get that good of attention in my opinion. I mean, like when I had um, a medical crisis in 2004, I think, and I had to see a neurologist, she would see me for two minutes once a year and refill my prescription. That wasn't working for me. And I mean, that's pretty characteristic of the way things go. Whereas in other countries, like even here, you can get a house doctor or a hotel doctor. It's like 50 euro or something for the visit. And you can message them on WhatsApp. Like I have my doctor's phone number here and I have my doctor's number in Costa Rica and all different places. And if I have a question, I just message them. And it's really easy. Can you imagine a doctor in the U.S. giving you their cell phone number? No. <laughs> and um, also, when I hurt my eye, which is pretty much healed now, thank God, gracias a Dios, um, I had local medical and travel insurance in Bulgaria. And so it was free to get that treated. And it probably would have been really cheap anyway. And 
I would say actually the Netherlands, not such a good place for medical tourism. Like they have a good healthcare system, but it's not like super robust. Like they're basically, anytime anything's ever happened to me here, they tell me to take paracetamol, which is like a painkiller, like Tylenol or ibuprofen or something, but less strong. <laughs> so yeah, but Mexico, Costa Rica, like I've gone to the dentist in all different places and clinics and stuff and a lot of um a lot of countries in latin america are really good for that also asia as well southeast asia oh and canada yeah tech lords mentions canada i actually haven't used the healthcare system in canada but i do know that it's really good and i'm not sure how much it is for foreigners if you go in, but I'm, I'm pretty sure Canada has a good medical tourism system as well. Um, Alberto would like to hear more about my meditation habit and routine. Um, yes, <laughs> I do have a routine and I have a lot of daily like visualization and like different strategies for goal setting. If you guys um, wanna check out on Medium, I have a post called, I have two posts. I'll post it in the comments or in the video description too. And one is on how I set a hundred goals to achieve in 180 days last year. And then I did a follow up six months later that I published in January of this year about how it went. And that has a lot of information on how I do my goal setting. But, um, I think if I would just, we'll have to do a separate live stream about meditation and probably a separate one about goal setting because those are really big topics. But if I was gonna give one tip for starting to meditate, I would say to try the free version of Insight Timer because it gives you, you can see how many people are meditating around the world at any time. You have an option for a timer, you can track your progress, you can get into like, a streak of meditations and there's a library of like hundreds of thousands of guided meditations and it's almost like a social network built into a meditation app so that's really good to start off with um, also um, there's Deepak Chopra and Oprah do like these free meditation challenges that are 20 minutes a day for 21 days and I've been doing those for the past few years and they do them like two or three times a year maybe. And they have an app for that, so that's pretty good. And then for goal setting, um, the most important thing for goal setting is to have a few goals at one time, not a hundred like I did before, and to um, make sure they're very specific. So specific, measurable, actionable. There's something called like a SMART goal, specific measurable, actionable, realistic, and time bound. So you want it to be like specific, not general, not like eat healthier, for example. You want it to be um, do a keto diet for this many months or you know, follow a keto diet plan for this many months instead of like eat healthier. Or you want to put like workout for 60 minutes per day, three times a week for the next three months or something instead of exercise more. Um, so you wanna make sure that they're specific and also you wanna make sure that you like actually care about the goals. And then my other tip would be to keep it top of mind. So if not every day <laughs> looking at your goals, then at least once a week and also to track your progress and your wins. So let's say you um, have a goal to like work out five days a week, but you work out four days a week. Like you can just write down, like I worked out four days this week. I'm proud of myself. I wanted to do five, but I didn't because of this. So next week I'm gonna try to be more conscious about that and make sure that I blah, blah, blah. You know, you just wanna be tracking your progress um, and giving yourself a pat on the back and keeping them top of mind because it's super super common to like set goals and then forget about them so you want to make sure you're writing them down they're smart goals and you are looking at them <laughs> to remind yourself because for whatever reason 
in the human experience, we need to remind ourselves of what's important or we can get dragged into the downward spiral. So we're going to be really careful about that. What else is going on in the chat? Mm -hmm. Related question from KVAR, what do I do for health insurance? Um, I use World Nomads. I've been using them for the last like three years. And also I've been looking into safety wing. So I'll post links to those below. I need to write this down um, so I don't forget. What was I posting? Links to the goals article, safety wing, world nomads. And then when I'm in the US, I haven't been there that much, but when I'm in the US regularly, I do have regular um, Obamacare or whatever it's called. But when I'm not there, I don't keep it because some of the other um, insurances will cover you for like one month per year if you're in the US, but if you're out of the US the rest of the time. Ahmed says, why don't you think about making a Kristen camp? Camp for one month in an Asian country, camp for everything, fitness, meditate, diving, online business. Think about it, please. Okay. <laughs> I like that name, actually. Can we call my retreat Kristen Camp? That's so funny. And we can share a villa and then it will be great. Yes. Thank you, Ahmed. Did you get the link? Oh, maybe it won't post because I think it holds links for spam. But maybe Tech Lords can accept it. Do you see that, Tech Lords? Wow, it's getting cold out here. <laughs> Copyright the name. <laughs> You're welcome, Alberto. Awesome. Thanks, Tech Lords. Um, I have gone through the copyright process, the trademark process before. It wasn't fun, but I did it. Um, I don't know. It was kind of a waste of money, I think. Well, it just depends. It's like one of those things. It's like insurance that it's not important unless someone tries to steal your name, and then it is. Thank you. Okay, so guys, if you want the link to the goals article, um, Tech Lords just let it through from Alberto, who was Googling it while I talked. <laughs> so yes, I think, do I have any videos on health insurance yet? I think I have, oh, I have a live stream in my Facebook group on that, but I need to make an actual video with a blog and stuff. So, oh, it's getting pretty out there. There's the sunset. Can kind of see it. Well, this is a nicer backdrop than my wall. What do you, what do you guys say? <laughs> Okay guys, I'm gonna go back to work now. And tomorrow, what time is the live stream tomorrow? Tomorrow, I think it's going to be, <laughs> we'll address that in a second. Um, okay, the times changed. I wanna start trying to do them like at the same time, like seven o'clock. This is seven o'clock this week or today. So I want to try doing the same time every day. So, oh, I changed my ticket today. So I don't leave tomorrow. I leave on April 9th for Florida. So I'll be here for another nine days. Um, so we'll do seven o'clock tomorrow for the live stream. So that's, I think, 12 or 1 p.m. Eastern time. Um, yeah, I'm annoyed that I got one less hour of sleep, but I still got eight hours. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, so Ahmed said when you spoke about trademark process and look at your body language and eyes rolling, it's a bad memory. Yeah, I spent a lot of money on it and it took a really long time and I still to this day get a ton of spam from the people who like basically steal information or they collect information from the trademark office in the US and then they just there's like all of these scams and people just spam you and try to get you to pay money, like fraudulent stuff. So it's super annoying. But um, I did a trademark the name to my company, Poker Refugees, because people were using my name to like to just describe poker players in general. And also 
they were, oh, we were talking about doing a reality show, so I didn't want someone else to take my name for a reality show, but then it didn't end up working out, so, but I still went through the process, and I learned a lot, and it is useful, so, okay, guys, have a good night, see you, hasta mañana, tomorrow is the 90th day of live streams, maybe I'll think of something cool to do, we'll see, <laughs> all right, good night, I'll try not to work too hard.